series of short videos related to the benchmark transitions. Each video is an introduction to a particular aspect of the transition. The planned video are listed on the screen. New subject will be added later. After two introductory sections, there will be two sections on the overnight transition and four sections on the iBOR fallback. The best view plan is to watch the video in order. Alternative orders for the sections are displayed on the screen with the dotted lines. You can skip the introduction, watch only the overnight part or watch only the eyeball part. You can even watch them in random order. This will be a better replication of the feeling from most market participants dealing with the daily flow of information over the last two years. The slides are available on my website at the address appearing on the screen. First part, which is the description of the benchmark. For LIBOR benchmark, they are based on a tenor deposit. We will focus only on Euro, Sterling and Dollar in this presentation. So a deposit underlying a LIBOR benchmark is described by a fixing date, which is the date where the measurement or the observation is down. And this observation is for a certain deposit that starts quite soon after the fixing date. For the dollar and euro, it is usually T plus two. So two business days after the fixing date. And for sterling, it is T plus zero, the same date. The deposit has a certain tenor, so certain length, uh, up to its maturity. The effective date and the maturity date are adjusted for non-good business days want to attract your attention on this part, it means that the maturity date can move slightly uh, forward if the theoretical maturity date is over a weekend or over a uh, holiday. This will be quite important when we will discuss uh, the, the fallback at a later stage. This was for the LIBOR uh, benchmark based on a deposit. For uh, the main uh, LIBOR, um, the main IBOR uh, benchmarks are LIBOR and EURIBOR. In sterling, LIBOR is, as mentioned uh, previously, starting the same day, so the spot like is a zero business date, and all the dates are to be measured or looked at in the London calendar. The dollar LIBOR is a little bit more complex. The spot lag is two business days, but uh, there are different calendars that enter into account. LIBOR starts with L, which stands for London. So the fixing dates are the good business days in London. Then we need to make a deposit in dollar, which is possible only in the US. So the effective date is based on the London, uh, a mixture of the London calendar and the New York calendar. And finally, the maturity date is based on the New York calendar. For uh, Euro Euribor, the spot lag is two business days, and the calendar for all of them, uh, all the dates are uh, Euro target. Target stands for Trans European Automated Real Time Gross Settlement Express Transfer. This is the joint calendar uh, for uh, financial payment in the Eurozone. The other type of benchmarks are the overnight benchmarks. Again, there is a fixing date, the date where you decide or you measure something. There is a starting date, the effective date, which is the same as the fixing date. Overnight benchmark, meaning you start today just and you deposit just for one night. And then the maturity date is the next uh, business day. There is a small uh, subtlety in the overnight benchmarks is when the information is published. The information is usually published on the uh, maturity date. So the measurement is done on the fixing date, but we as user receive the information only the next day on T plus one. It used to be, at least in sterling and euro, that information was published on the same day, 
but since the central banks have taken over the publication of those uh, benchmarks, the publication date has moved to the T plus one, to the date, to the maturity date. The main uh, benchmarks for overnight are in Sterling Sonia, it has existed since 97. Uh, it has been reformed in April 18 and is now published by the Bank of England. It is based on unsecured wholesale lending. In dollars, there are two uh, benchmarks, a very old one, effective Fed fund rate that exists since uh, 54. Uh, the payments are based on the New York calendar and is published by the Federal Reserve based on unsecured interbank lending. The new uh, benchmark, which is expected to take over in the US dollar market, is SOFR, Secured Overnight Financing Rate, which exists since April 2018. You have to be a little bit careful there. The calendar for SOFR is not the same as for effective uh, Fed fund rate. It is the governance security calendar because uh, software is based on repo. So you need to have the government uh, security uh, open uh, to settle those transactions. It is also published by the Federal Reserve. In Euro, there are also two benchmarks. Aonia, which has exists since uh, Euro exists in 99, based on the same Euro target calendar and is published by EMMI, European Money Market Institute, so a private institution, and it is based on insecured interbank, unsecured interbank lending. On the uh, new side, there is Ester or Euro STR, which is which exists since 2019, uh, and it is published by the ECB. It is based on unsecured uh, wholesale lending. There are also a lot of other benchmarks related to overnight. A couple of them are on the screen. In LIBOR, there, there are term uh, rates, let's say for one month, three months, six months, but also overnight rates. In Sterling, there is also Ronya, based on repos, so on secured lending, which is still published by WMBA. That was the publisher of Sonia before Bank of England took over. In the US, there are a couple of other secure lending benchmark, OBFR, for example, uh, which is uh, uh, published by the Federal Reserve. There is, exists also Ameribor, which is unsecured interbank lending, which exists since 2016 and which is favored by some uh, smaller uh, banks instead of uh, software. And in Euro, there is also a Euro NIA rate, which exists in 99 and which is based on uh, secured lending, so repos. When we have those two benchmarks, we can make derivative on them, and the focus of those videos will be on the derivatives. The main derivatives related to LIBOR are plain vanilla interest rate swaps. They are based on the streams of payment related to LIBOR. Each of the payment has the same structure. At the start, you have the fixing in theta. Then a couple of days later, you have the start of the theoretical underlying LIBOR deposit, which is the same as the accrual period for your derivative and then you move to the end where you have a payment date uh, which is the end accrual for the derivative which is usually quite similar to the maturity of the underlying deposit but due to the non-good non business date it can be slightly different we will see later when we will discuss fallback that very quite often there is a one day difference the other type of derivatives are the overnight related, overnight linked derivatives. Overnight are based on just one day deposit and you don't want to do too many payments 
you don't want to do payments every day so usually those uh, fixings those benchmarks are grouped into uh, a single uh, one payment for several fixing and in term of overnight the, the accumulation the grouping is done in the following way you have uh, at each date it's like if you were investing the notional one plus the interest io on the screen and every day you invest notional plus interest from the previous day you invest it the next day so you have the product so the composition of notional plus interest and in the derivative you receive only the interest and the minus one so you accumulate overnight for a certain number of days up to the payment the payment is usually not done exactly on the uh, end accrual but a couple of days later like in a lot of derivative to leave time for the settlement so those are the main derivative associated uh, to the, the benchmarks and this uh, finish our first part which is the introduction to benchmarks